I'm going to be using dog food. And I'm going to put... I have three traps today. I have one opera house trap. And then I have two collapsible bait traps. Now I'm going to put a whole dog food inside this um, opera house trap. And then I'm going to split this in half. And then put half in each of these two bait traps. Without making a mess, I'm going to... No, I'm going to have to make a mess. Alright, so I'm going to take half of this, put it straight into this trap. Into the bait pouch of this bait trap. There we go. Just untangle this. Now, I'll put this a longer rope on this trap, so then I can put it in deeper water. But because shrimp like hiding near banks, in rocky waters, and with lots of obstacles, so then they can hide, I don't think I'll be needing it today. Put half the dog, other half the dog food in there. And then we'll move on to the next trap. Get the knife, cut a bit of lamandra off at the bottom here. Remember, always cut away from yourself so you don't cut yourself. Now I'm going to put this back in the socket for the knife. Rip this in half because it's too wide. And then I'm going to poke many holes in the top and bottom and sides of this dog food. So then the shrimp can smell it. I'm going to tie it onto this cross beam of this trap. Thread it through like that. Straight through the bottom and through the top. Do a double knot and then it should be good. Now you can find Lamandra all over southeast Queensland in their creek system, Sydney Creeks. Just do another knot to be sure. It's very abundant and it's really easy to use. And there you have it. Trap done. Now I'm gonna put these in shallow water. Just out here somewhere. When you're doing this, don't afraid to get wet, because it's gonna get wet anyway. So I'm just gonna place it right in the middle there. Round about here. Now with this opera house trap, what you need to do once you put the bait inside, it's different because it doesn't have a zip. So there's two little clips, one here and one here that you need to clip on and when you want to take fish out you just unclip both of them put them in your bucket. Right in there, perfect. Now I'm going to let, let these set for probably an hour, hour and a half and while they're setting I'm going to go over there in some shallower water and try and catch some little shrimp with my hands by turning over rocks. There's one. If you can see it. Just went under that rock. Now I'm gonna come b from behind, so it'd be very, very slow. Now this one's very very small and it has eggs. So this one has eggs just under there like crayfish. 
Now, I'm going to put this little guy back so then he can repopulate this area. Give it an hour. I'm going to go pull this first bait trap up. See what we've got in here. We have an eel. We have a spotted eel. And a lot and lots of guppies. Now, this eel isn't big enough to keep. keep all these little fish for my turtle I'm actually going to take him into the bucket so I can grab him easier oh no, he's out guys set it under another rock and let's check this other trap more guppies. Now we're at this third trap, opera house trap. Doesn't seem like there was a lot in there. Because there isn't much anyway. There's only one little baby shrimp. And that's it. Set it back. Same spot. See if we catch anything else. It's biting on onto me for a second there, but I got him. A little bit smaller than I expected, but I've got one. So I've seen probably like 20 today, but there's our first one. I've got this hessian bag, just gonna leave floating in the water. Yes! Look at those claws! Perfect! Tied up so they don't get out at all. Straight back in the water. Let's go catch another one. Now this is a horse crossing. There used to be pavement here, looks like. Sturdy wood. Oh, there's one.
another one. So guys, the last pull of the traps. Let's see what we have. We have a shrimp, decently sized, and we have a lot of guppies. So I'll get the guppies and everything in this bucket home for my turtle. He can feed on those. And the shrimp's in there too. I've got to take everything out. Next trap. Just got some guppies. A lot of them. This is the last trap we get to pull up before we cook the shrimp. And I've left all three of those, the last pull. I left them in there for two hours long. Caught a little shrimp, a little tiny baby shrimp, but nothing else. So, just got back from pulling up those traps and catching the rest of those shrimp. And we've got, so we're gonna cook those shrimp up. We've got four, three decent sized and one small-ish one. So, we're gonna cook those up and we're going to be using a propane burner on the go because I don't want to be starting fires because it's near summer. I've got a knife just in case. I didn't have a small enough um, pot to put the shrimp in so I've just got this old little um, teapot. Water inside this pot. Fairly clean water. Three quarters of the way full. It's a bit heavy, so I'm going to hold it like this. So we're going to walk back. Now I've just got to wait for this to boil. It's just started boiling. As you can tell. And the rule of thumb is you leave it boiling for about five to ten minutes because it's river water because it might be contaminated a little bit. Time is just up for seven minutes and it's beautiful right now. So I'm about to get the shrimp. I left them in the water and didn't kill them so then they'd be nice and fresh straight out of the water. See we've got four right here, this one's a bit small but he's okay. I caught all of these by hand. So we're going to put them straight in there. Small one first. That's one. That's two. That's three. Oh, this one's a bit lively. That's four. So you can already tell that some of them already got to start pink. Now I'm gonna put, I forgot the salt today, but I remembered the lemon juice. So I'm gonna put some lemon juice in there. Cause I don't have anything else to put inside the actual water. Just give it a little bit of flavor. That's good enough. Wait for that to boil and start boiling again. The bucket's almost ready, guys, because it's boiling a lot and a lot and a lot. So you can see, so crustaceans, mostly shellfish and stuff with tails. Once the um, main body part, um, separates itself a little bit from the abdomen or the carapace like this isn't ready yet 
but once it does that, it usually means it's ready. So when they start doing that, I'll take them out. But they're not just ready yet. So the carapace has, it's really hot, um, the carapace has started, on the smaller ones, the carapace has started to um, detach from the rest of the body, as you can sort of see just there. That means that one's done. Get the smaller one, the other small one. That. It's really hard to get these out with one hand. Um, and then these other two, the two big ones, they're done as well. You can see how big and red they are. Well, not really because it's big. But like, you can see how big and red they are. I want to turn it off now. But look how red that is. Absolutely beautiful. So he's done. Carabin is their actual name, and they're nice and cooked. I let them cool down for probably like 30 seconds to a minute. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of them in one side, and then I'm going to put Cupy on the plate. I'm going to peel it, I'm going to rip from the carabus and the main part of the body, I'm going to rip that off, we don't really need that stuff, and then I'm going to put the tail out like this, and then from each side I'm just going to peel the shell backwards. I've got to do it the whole way down the actual piece of meat and the tail. Oh, that pipe just broke off just there. But there's a little bit left in the actual tail part. And it's the same with 